welcome to another episode of Gaming the System. You've joined me, Alex, Jem and Matt, and we are three intersectional feminists here to talk about gaming and feminism and how they intersect and gaming for a feminist lens. Um, so with that out of the way, we're going to be covering voice actors in this episode, voice acting in games, in video games, uh, and everything going on there and our thoughts about it. So I guess I would like to kick off with my first question. How does voice acting in a video game impact on your overall gaming experience? And who would like to start? I'm going to pick someone, that'll be mean. Uh, Matt, how, how do you think voice acting can impact on your gaming experience? Well, it's, it's everything, really, because... Um, just like with, I, I'm, I was upset, a bit of, well, not upset, just a bit <sighs> yesterday because we've had like six weeks off of recording and it struck me that this means that I'm going to have to talk about capitalism for the first time in six weeks. And that's, that, <laughs> that saddened me. <laughs> um, but oh. yeah, but it's, 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 a vital part of any game there are the days are gone where it's just reading text off a screen it's acting these words and it is labor there are so many things that are not counted as labor that get discounted as oh it's easy to just go and stand in the studio for a while but without their voices there all we have is our own voice in our head reading things they're the people responsible for bringing the content of the game actually into life. And you notice playing Hitman for nearly a thousand hours over the last couple of months. There are actually only about three or four actors that they've used in the entire like three game. So like you'll talk to one NPC and then walk over to another one. It will be the same person. Uh, I just think that that's 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 fine and that's funny, but it's the because again, voice acting in gaming is more much more like voice acting in anime and cartoons because you don't your physical expression, nothing about your body gets transmitted through. It's all of it has to be carried by your voice, so it is a skill. It is labor, it is work, and it's 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 a bit like with the music, like you know you only notice the trick is to notice it and it feels like it's just part of the thing and you don't have to it doesn't have to mm. stand out particularly, but it's it's just another core pillar of modern mm. gaming, video gaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, w I would agree. Absolutely. I think it's a an undervalued, under recognized um, thing that is absolutely essential to to um, your gaming experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I, I've been gaming since long before they had um, actors doing you know, playing any of the roles. And, um, and when, as Matt said, you know, you had to read <laughs> and, you know, or just make it up yourself. Um, and, you know, that had its benefits and that had, that definitely had value, but the, um, the, the, the immersive experiences improved so much by having, having voice actors and having good voice actors. Um, and I'm, I'm, I've complained about it before, but it also makes a game more accessible, I think, in some ways, um, because not everyone can read um, and not everyone can read quick enough to keep up with uh, uh, conversations and things like that. I mean, um, so it, I've complained about Disney. Um, uh, well, I can never remember what it's called. Disney Valley. Good. See, Caroline isn't here to, <laughs> to tell me. I know she's a big fan of it. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to call it Happy Valley, <laughs> but it's not. Um, and But that game is perfect for younger children, absolutely perfect, because it's all of the Disney characters. There's nothing 
um, adult um, inappropriate about it, ad adultly inappropriate about it, and yet little kids can't play it because it's because all of the um, the voice acting is is just isn't there you know it's just text and i don't really understand why a company as big and powerful as disney couldn't have sorted that mm. and I, the only thing i can think um you know and i'm going to get on the capitalism rant here <laughs> the only thing i can think is that they just wanted to get it out as quickly as possible and they didn't want to bother with with getting the voice actors in because that does take time um and um and it should add to cost but i think we'll probably be talking about how uh, how little um additional costs you know mm. that the voice actors bring to the 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 game so yeah i think it's a really essential thing and i think it's something that can really make or break a game indeed yeah i think that you can I, was just, I just wanted to add um the things like uh, my uh like talking about Harry Potter and um, Disney is up there with Harry Potter and Star Wars where they just go, it doesn't matter if we put anything out and put Disney on it. The people love Disney so much, they will flock to it regardless of how like good or bad it might be. So why bother? Why bother with voice acting? Why bother with good voice acting? Even though they uh, literally have all the money they have mm. everything and they 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 yeah they choose not to because it who cares it doesn't matter it doesn't matter no but yeah i think from our point of view as gamers voice acting is pretty integral to our experience of the games that we love i mean just taking the example of trailers i've got um, at the time of recording, games come on in the background, which is of course stuff full with trailers. How many trailers have you guys seen where it's just a blank screen, and then you hear the voice of a character you know, like off by heart, and you get so excited when you hear it, even with just that blank screen, you immediately know, oh, that must be that game because it's this voice. Um, and I think it's pretty poor. We'll get into the discussion a bit later about like the pay and uh, the strikes and things and um you know for that to be the 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 if i'm going to use some corporate language now like the usp of your game is the talent of the voice actor for them not to be like paid and given the rights and uh, the conditions that they're asking for is is pretty poor um but yeah you laughed them at me. <laughs> Was there yeah. something? You... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just noticed what you've titled the episode. Ah, oh, uh, genius, yes. genius. Yes. Yes. For those who uh, <laughs> cannot see, I have called our episode. Who said that? Question mark. Voice actors. <laughs> exclamation mark. Yes. Always fun. I do love a good pun, as do does everyone else in the GTS team. I'm sure. Um, so getting on to the subject, we've we've skirted around it. We can talk a little bit about the pay of video game actors and um, discussion around them not getting things like residuals. I had to look up what residuals were because I wasn't entirely sure. I essentially think they're money that actors would get paid um, for any repeats of, of content that they're involved in, if it's anything similar to like TV series or... Uh, film was or anything like that. Um, I'm just going to find the article that I shared with you guys. It was back in 2018. Oh no, wait, let me just double check. I must get my facts right. But it's um, 2022. Ah, yeah. yes. It was the video game voice actress for Bayonetta who spoke out, uh, Helena Taylor the original voice lead character in the multi-million selling Bayonetta games, who posted a series of videos on Twitter uh, explaining why she was not continuing her role in the series. So she stepped away due to her um, what she feels is an insult to her, uh, the amount of time 
quote that I took to work on my talent and to everything that I have given to this game and the fans, asking, she asked supporters to boycott the game in solidarity with people all over the world who do not get paid properly for their talents. She said she no longer feared the consequences of speaking out. I can't even afford to run a car. What are they going to do, take my clothes? Um, so yeah, this is a long running, I believe, dispute about uh, her cut of the pay when you think about how much money the games themselves make. Uh, I believe she was offered a $4,000 flat rate fee for a smaller role instead after asking to step away uh, from the game. And the game itself uh, claims, or the actress claims the games have made more than 450 million in revenue, uh, which is quite a, a gargantuan disparity there in terms of like the amounts of money. Um, did either of you have time to read through the article itself? Or mm. did you have any thoughts about what was being mentioned? Yeah, I mean, I think it. I, th I think it's a real shame that she clearly wasn't. Well, not only did she have to go through the um, the process of of reinterviewing for a, a job she'd already done twice, which is mm. humiliating for yeah. most people. Yeah. Excuse me. Sorry. But she also had to. Um, she was also supposedly offered this ridiculously low amount of money. Now, mm. I don't know what the going rate is for voice actors. And I think it it, it probably should be slightly less than um, film actors if the, if people are going into a, a studio and, and doing their voice acting, but not, you know, spending all the time on set in the same way. However, it's still... It still requires time. It still requires skill. Mm. It still requires. It still takes them away from something else that they could be doing to earn money. Yeah. And I think you know, in a, in so many ways, we are on a race to the bottom when it comes to to wages and valuing um, people's talent, which is what she she talks about. Talent and experience, you know, are not valued. Um, I would be really interested to sort of know how how this. I mean, they say in the article um, that it's not she's not alone in mm. having this kind of attitude, but I don't know what sort of the going rate is in the industry. And I'd I be can, really uh, interested. To see, are you, can you share that? I can't hear you, Alex. Sorry, sorry, yeah. everybody. Slight technical difficulty. <laughs> I muted myself. I am to blame. Uh, Side Global, one of the outsourcing companies that provides voiceovers for video games, pays on a tiered system that actors describe as insulting and discriminatory. So there's like three tiers. Um, tier one, which pays £250 an hour plus a £500 buyout fee per job, is described as the superstars of games voiceover while noting some client budgets will not be able to accommodate tier one actors. Because of this, if an actor chooses to be classed as tier two instead, to ensure more chance of being put forward, they may do so. Tier two actors are paid 50 pounds less an hour with a 400 pound buyout. And tier three comprises new signings, drama graduates and actors less known to us. Older actors who are doing less work on stage and screen, and those voicing, quote, niche, exotic, or complex characters who may specialize in a native accent. These actors are paid £200 an hour with a £350 buyout. Unlike TV and film, video game actors are not paid residuals, which I thought was really interesting for us mm. to discuss because there's a lot of things that are. Uh, like the actors say, insulting and discriminatory within those those tiers that I've just described. Um, I mean, <laughs> uh, I can't even start with tier three. Like, no, the niche, I mean the niche of yeah. characters. <laughs> like, is that just a uh, a way for them to say non-white character? Like, I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but I I just feel like that's pretty awful. <laughs> I'd like to I mean, start. Your niche character is your lead mm. character. I mean, mm, exactly. You know, yeah. Sorry, Matt. I didn't mean to. 
Um, yeah, I just I want to start with because I I always I I might it could be confused when I rail against capitalism that I want anarchy or there to be no rules or communism or something like that. <laughs> I have an offer for the ruling and executive class: fifteen percent. The executives, the shareholders, all of that stuff, you can have 15%. But then the 85% goes to everyone else. That's my that's my offer to them, because that is so reasonable. Imagine like a game like uh say that Bayonetta one makes mm. hundreds of millions of dollars. The the problem with what our capitalist setup is, is that workers generate wealth and then they don't get a share in the wealth that they generate. So we mm-hmm. get taught that, oh, we, you get your hourly wage and then maybe you get a bonus once a year. The $400 million that your labor was a part of generating, that goes all to the executives and the ruling class. And so that's a core problem. And this with voice actors, it's freelancing. It's the gig economy. It's the same as me doing Deliveroo. You have no legal rights because you're not legally an employee of the the people that you're doing work for. So they can treat you however they please. Um, and just the, the thinking of how different the world would be if you she does that voice acting for one game then maybe she gets if a thousand people worked on that game they each get a an equal percentage of that 85 percent they would be millionaires and they go oh well that's well, that, that can't work why not why not it's literally that simple and that's the kind of greed that and cruelty and brutality that is inflicted on particularly people working in these gig economy jobs because in places like in England for the time being we have the NHS we have free healthcare and the only way to get healthcare in America is either through your job or paying for it out of pocket and if you're not getting paid enough for your freelance work to get healthcare and you're not illegally employed mm. by somewhere, then you're screwed. And they rely on that desperation of going, mm. oh, we'll chuck you $4,000 to do this job. And yeah, it's it's just another part of this. It's almost as if there's a systemic problem that is spread throughout the entirety of society that is <laughs> leading to the oppression of Never. working class and labourers. No, I must be. I Careful, be Matt. You'll get the Illuminati after you, if you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think with I think you know Helena Taylor. She, you know, she, by coming out with this piece, by mm. refusing to take that money, by saying, you know, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to take a, a smaller part in a game that I've already voiced. I'm not. You know, all of these things. And then doing, and then you know, writing, writing these posts and and these videos. I think she, you know, she's taking taking the power that we all have. Actually, we do have. You know, I mean, I think this is one thing that we do have. There is a bit of, a, there is power in in us all. And she took it and she used her minor celebrity status to raise awareness of the issue. But I'm willing to bet that it probably hasn't moved on much since. But it, it, you know, maybe that will shift the dial a little bit. And at least we're talking about it today. Is you know a step. But I, yeah, I agree. It's it's just mm. it all just comes down to money, doesn't it? And, um, and also, I think you know, like um, uh, some of the voice actors do the. Um, do the suiting up and and all of the mm. you know the, yeah the motion action. capture yeah. yeah the motion capture stuff and so um I think that's quite you know that's another layer isn't it of, yeah of, that's like perhaps time. that's like a different designation I don't know I presume they would come under like motion capture artist or I don't know 
I don't know. I should, I should have done more research into that. But yeah, I think for the lowest paid, it's probably just come to the to the booth, record your audio, and go. That's that's kind of the the bottom of the pile, so to speak. But I think those who are involved in motion capture are probably. I mean, I I think it started out. I'm trying to remember when it first started out, it would have been like the first examples I can think of are like the first Uncharted and they were talking about it being a new technology and things. So, mm. but whether that's a similar condition, I don't know. Um, I think you sent... it's use... Sorry, Matt, go. I think, I, I, I think either Alex, you sent it to us or yeah. I, I might have looked it. Um, the actress who plays Aloy. Oh, yeah. Since she, um, it was about her, she had... Um, the thing that singers get is they blow their voice out oh, yeah. and they can't speak for a while and your voice is your job but it's a, mm. a very different to the the thing with um like in-person actors and motion capture actors they for the most part you sit down and you wait for everything to get set up then you get up and you do your scene and then you stop and then everything resets you have a few minutes while they set all the technical stuff up and then you carry on like that. It's a far more like you do, you do your scene and then you stop. Do your scene, do your, when you stop. But when you're doing voice acting, they go, right, say this line and you say, it. okay, that's good. Say it again. Okay. Say it again. And so that you've got the director who can literally get you to say, you speak lines dozens, hundreds of times and that's a way that your labor is exploited in that they just go, oh, we've we've given you 200 pounds, just say this over and over and over and over mm. and over again. And that any, any time that a, a someone providing labor does not have completely rock solid rights, it just means that the people paying them can say, "Well, we're you. We're supposed to do everything we say. We're giving you money. That means you do whatever we say. And if you don't do it, then we won't hire you." Um, and that's mm. that's the element. So, Gem, you're saying this this kind of article. It's good to it's it's good publicity. It's good that she's doing it, but individuals can't make this sort of thing stop. Um, but fortunately, the uh, Hollywood writer and actor strikes, that's mm. how you get change. When you get, mm. they've got everyone from the, the the smallest like bit part all the way up to the absolute Hollywood megastars mm. all going, we're stopping production until we sort this out. And that added on to um, animators are getting involved in that now. And what this is showing is that every single person working is being exploited in the same way by the same people. Mm. And the only way to stop that is for everyone to go, oh, that's just, we can just stop and down tools and we'll stop until this is fixed, until they agree to our 15% and 85% that's this is i'm so i'm this if anything's going to work this is going to work mm. and so it'll be it's hopeful but we'll see yeah i looked into the strikes actually um so just to get some some uh, context on it really because i i was i was aware of them but i wasn't aware of the details and so i think it started on the 14th of july and uh, they're basically on strike pushing for higher wages, residuals increases, and protection from AI. And we've, I think we've talked about AI mm. in the, one of our previous episodes. Um, basically, the fear is that AI and streaming has, has, has um, initiated a lot of fear and worry about levels of pay and job security. Um, which means they're striking to attempt to redress the balance, essentially. And I did also find out that about 64% of video game voice actors aren't actually union members, but some of them are striking anyway because of their, um, because of like how they tie into slightly other parts of the industry and just due to like the prevalence of AI 
taking over particularly voice acting jobs or their voices being used um, that they've done in jobs before, used on other jobs without their permission, that kind of thing. Um, so there's all sorts of interwoven issues that are kind of causing the uh, the strikes and the, all the worry around uh, around job security, which was uh, interesting to read, definitely. Mm. I just thought of something important to say. Yes. Well, important to important to me, I think, but something about strikes. It was. Mm. Oh, I can't remember what it was. Oh. It's okay. It'll come there, back. There with me. It'll I'll, come back. Come back. <laughs> but yeah. So, like you say, Matt, it's uh, there's also bigger strikes. And this was particularly in relation to SAG AFTRA, S A G D A hyphen A F T R A, which is where, which is the one that started on the 14th of July. But there is a bigger one, the Writers and Actors. Uh, Writers and Actors Screen Guild, or I think whatever it was that you mentioned at the very beginning, that's a, that's the bigger one, but they're kind of overlapping at the moment, really. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on in Hollywood, a lot of discontent. And hopefully, like you say, it will um, push push the higher-ups into thinking about it. Have you thought of it, Matt? Have I've you remembered. Thought of what you I've remembered. Yes. I remember. So uh, uh, when it comes to strikes, that this is this has never really happened before on such a big scale in the biggest probably the one at least one of the biggest uh, business markets on the planet and in history and when you've got everyone on strike going downing tools until we negotiate something that is a time for where the ambitions of how, where and what and how much you can demand because we're taught our entire lives that there are two kinds of power there's political power and there's money and the working in order to be working class you are not going to be a part of the one percent it's going you're not going to be have so much money that you can influence the world in a massive way and so working class people go so oh well just vote vote for people the government is the way to do it and then they've got us down to thinking of that here as oh if you've got a problem in four years time try and vote the person who you might deal with the problem so it just everything gets fobbed off for four years and you have to try and convince these people in power to advocate for you and so that that dictates how ambitious you might be to ask so but when you've got all these people on strikes they could negotiate a world-changing paradigm, like the 15 and 85% thing. They could implement, get a regulations that completely ban using AI in any of these productions. And they might go, oh, but, 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 but what about what the people with money and what about the people in politics? And you go, it doesn't matter. You can go, if you use an AI on one job, we're going to go on strike again. And I just, I'm, de I'm desperately hopeful that they are going to use that, have that kind of ambitiousness in it because the world is watching this mm. and they're going, hey, it's, wor it's working. I could do that. And so it, it needs, it needs to win. It really does need to win. We shall keep our fingers crossed, I think. Mm. Yes. Does anyone have... Anything else to add before I bring this little little episode to a close for part one? No? All right. Then we shall bring it to a close. So that marks the end of episode one of Voice Actors in Video Games. We hope you've enjoyed our little discussion um, on all those sorts of things. And we'll be back for part two um, for the next episode where we'll talk some more about it in case you want to hear some more. Um, we usually have an episode every Thursday. We're very much looking forward to traveling to Cardiff for the gaming and anime con, which I probably said wrong. It's the anime and gaming con in Cardiff on the 9th of September, Saturday. Uh, we will be talking on a panel at 3 p.m. Go and have a look, see if you can get some tickets if you're in the area or even if you have trouble a very long way, we'd be very <laughs> grateful and we'd love to see you there. Um, and 
thank you very much for your support. Let us know what you think about this particular topic. Share it with your friends. Give us some likes. Give us some love. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Thank you very much. Bye.